Hi, I'm Lucy, and today I'm going to be talking about finding alpha in political contributions. So corporations tend to give a lot of money to political campaigns, and corporations are typically rational, so we might think that there's some sort of motivation behind this giving. Now, there are two general schools of thought relating to this concept. Some political scientists think that contributions are a consumption good. In other words, corporations make political contributions for the sake of making them, because they get some sort of utility out of it. This might be the utility of seeming socially responsible, or because they want to align themselves with a particular political group. Now, other political scientists think that political contributions are more of a quid pro quo situation, kind of like a marketplace, where corporations give politicians money for their campaigns in exchange for political favors. Now, this sounds a bit dark, but these kinds of favors might be tax breaks, deregulation, subsidies, things like that. If the latter is true, we might expect that corporations who make more political contributions get more political favors and thus perform better, resulting in higher stock prices. Now, there are a lot of assumptions here. For example, better performance doesn't always equal higher stock prices. However, in general, across a large cross-section of companies, we might think that this is true. So if we have a large enough sample size over a large enough period of time, we'd hope to see this effect. Now, people have found that this is true already. Specifically, this exploration is based on the 2010 paper by Cooper, Gulen, and Ovchinnikov called Corporate Political Contributions and Stock Returns. So how might we go about examining this relationship ourselves once we have this hypothesis? Well, first, we need to construct a data set that lists the number of campaign contributions per company. Then we'll upload this data set onto the Quantopian platform using the self-serve data feature and use Pipeline to construct our alpha factor from our data set. Finally, we'll use alpha lens to analyze whether this factor is actually predictive. So let's begin with the construction of the data set. We'll start with raw data from the Federal Election Commission, or FEC. This data set has one entry per campaign contribution, which is perfect for our needs. However, there is one issue. Companies don't generally donate under their own names. Instead, they donate through linked political action committees, or PACs. And as such, the FEC records contributions by PAC ID. It would be really nice if we had a direct link from PAC ID to ticker, but unfortunately, that's not the case. We have to map PAC ID to company name, then map company names to tickers. Thankfully, the FEC does provide a data set that maps PAC ID to company name, and NASDAQ provides data sets that map company names to tickers. Since the data is all there, this would ideally be simple, but there are a couple roadblocks. First, company names aren't consistent across data sets. For example, a company might be listed as ABC Inc. in one data set, and ABC Incorporated in the other. To fix this issue, we drop common words from the company names. We also have slightly incomplete records. For some PACs, the FEC doesn't provide an associated company name. We solve this in two ways. First, we look through the data sets for every year and collect all possible names associated with each ID. And second, we guess the name based on the name of the PAC. For example, ABC Incorporated PAC is probably associated with ABC Incorporated. So now that we've worked out these roadblocks, we should have our full data set. Now we can upload it to self-serve data. Once we've uploaded it, we construct a factor using pipeline. For now, we'll just use a really simple factor, simple moving average of the number of contributions. Now let's take a look at our tear sheet. In the cumulative return by quantile plots, we want to see three distinct fingers moving across the plot without crossing. In the 62-day middle period, we do see that the third quantile is consistently distinct from the first and second. This indicates that stocks with higher factor values do tend to generate higher returns over this period, which is good, that's what we're looking for. However, the first and second quantiles cross a couple times, which indicates that our factor doesn't do a good job of returning the lowest returning stocks. The third quantile also does not seem to perform as well in the 21-day and 124-day periods. Now let's take a look at the IC normal distribution QQ plots. Here we want to see an S-shaped curve, which indicates a normal distribution with fat tails, since high and low factor values are the stocks that we want to long and short, respectively. We do see slightly S-shaped curves in the plot for all three periods, so that's good. The mean turnover looks a little on the higher side, especially for the two longer periods. In general, it looks like there's still some work to be done here. We could modify this factor in a few ways. First, we could improve our data. As we noted earlier, there is some uncertainty in the way that we map political campaign contributions to a particular ticker. Removing some of this uncertainty would result in higher quality data, which could potentially improve our alpha factor. Second, we could improve our factor construction. Currently, we use the rolling 60-day count of political campaign contributions. However, there are many other factors that we could generate from this exact same data set. For example, we could create a factor that incorporates both count and sum of contributions, or somehow incorporate the identity of the political candidate to which the company is donating. So that's an example of the self-serve data workflow, from constructing a data set to uploading it to running an alpha lens study. Thanks for watching.